Hey YouTube, John here, and today we're talking about flight. So while everyone else is out of some tropical place for spring break, I'm back home with my brother here, and he's showing off some of his flying skills. But watching this plane in the air got me thinking, how's a plane stay up? Well, it turns out, the answer is a lot more complicated than I thought. Okay, so as you may already know, there are four major forces that act on an airplane in flight. Thrust, lift, drag, and gravity. Of these four forces, lift is the one that's most responsible for keeping a plane in the air. But how this lift is generated has long been the subject of hot debate. To understand this debate, we need to first familiarize ourselves with two of history's greatest scientists, Daniel Bernoulli and Sir Isaac Newton. Besides having two of the greatest wigs that science has ever seen, each of these men made key discoveries that provided fuel for aeronautic debates for centuries to come. First, let's look at the case for Bernoulli. Bernoulli's principle states that the faster a fluid flows, the lower its static pressure becomes. When this is applied to aeronautics, we get the lift hypothesis that most of us are familiar with, which states that a low pressure zone is created above the wing due to the air having to flow faster over the longer curved upper surface of the wing than over the flat lower surface in order to reconnect with the air flowing under the wing as it leaves the trailing edge. But this view of lift generation has some serious issues. First, studies have shown that the air that's split up at the leading edge of a wing doesn't meet back up at the trailing edge. In fact, the air travels so fast over the top of the wing that it comes off the trailing edge long before the air in the lower surface and never reconnects with the slow flowing friend. What's more is the fact that some planes are able to fly with symmetrically curved wings or wings that have no curvature at all. And if this is how planes generate lift, then how can some planes fly upside down? It seems that we have a problem. Enter Sir Isaac Newton. Newton's third law of motion states that every action is an equal and opposite reaction. This means that as the oncoming stream of air makes contact with the wing and is directed downward, a resulting force is created which can be broken down into its horizontal and vertical components, drag and lift. So now I'm sure that you're feeling pretty betrayed and maybe even experiencing a bit of a personal crisis. But rest assured, everything you learned isn't wrong. As it turns out, both Bernoulli's principle and Newton's third law of motion play a key role in allowing a plane to generate lift. In fact, instead of these two hypotheses being viewed as counterpoints, their effects should be viewed as a team that work together to keep planes in the air. And with that settled, we can move on to more compelling debates. Like who has better hair? Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you learned something. And if you're still curious about how a plane generates lift, NASA did some awesome studies and has some pretty cool wind tunnel simulators that I'll link in the description below. And until next time, never stop learning.